Hello, this is Keela, and uh, it's been a while, but I wanted to come and share some things with you, even though I'm not feeling the greatest. Um, kind of got squished between, my little car got squished between two cars last Monday, and so I have some uh, issues with pain and a little bit of brain fogginess, unfortunately. Um, kind of had a headache since that happened, but I still wanted to come. It's been a while and show you a few of my paper treasures that I've kept over the years, share a couple of poems with you. Um, here's a rendering of my name. It's uh, made with flowers. And that was made by my friend Kelly Barron uh, from Louisiana. I think she was actually born in Ohio. Kelly Marie, I think it was Marie Baron, and I've uh, I lost contact with her when I left down there. So I kept this little paper treasure with the flowers, and that was probably around the same time, 1982, uh, early 1983, and that's my my maiden name, Keila Sells, by my friend Les. My friend Les unfortunately passed away uh, unexpectedly. I think she had a blood clot go to her lung. And Leslie's birthday was two days after mine. Leslie Hudson Saldani. That was from March 1982. A little calligraphy that I kept in my folder. And I'm not sure which one of my friends did this. But it's, again, kind of like a spider web almost, huh? Kept it anyway. And this was my first husband, Todd, and then here in the heart, uh, Stephanie Burdett, Todd's cousin, did that for me. And uh, I kept it. That was July the 14th, 1984, and Stephanie was 16 at the time she did that. Kind of lost contact with her, too, since uh, my marriage to Todd lasted 10 years, and then I pulled the plug and ran away. And here I have some old poems. These are poems that were actually given to me by other people. Um, this one was from a young man named uh, Jacob Diaz uh, in Louisiana. I have not found him, although, you know, Facebook world, you tend to find people that you lost. This was, the date I put on it myself was February 3rd, 1982. And I was really kind of shocked um, by this gift. We, we had a class together, and I remember he carried my books one time, which I thought was kind of sweet. It says, uh, it's untitled. Once had, once lost, once was, and once gone. I thought I had her, but knowing it once, I remember she once was, but now she's gone. I never really had, I never really lost, but I'll never forget the time it was. And in parentheses, he put, this one's for you, Keila, and spelled each letter is... Um, cursive but capital and I don't know what he wrote over here because he marked it out pretty well so anyway um, he wanted to be a marine biologist I remember that I remember him showing me photographs lots of photographs of him with different uh, manly pursuits um, a, uh, a basketball a football um, martial arts like a karate outfit uniform he was a nice guy I don't know whatever happened to him, and I was too caught up in my own little um, introverted world to realize that he might have liked me. <laughs> and this one was written for me by my friend um, Kathy in uh, April, April 16th, 1982. I sat alone among the clouds last night and cried a million tears. All alone, my sorrow filled my heart beyond its years, and as daylight came, 
I hid my plight, hid it out of sight. But Keela, it's all right. The light of day can't last the way the stars last in your eyes, and no one knows this tired soul or the tears that I have cried. You know you've always made it bright, and Keela, it's all right. Only one thing I'm sure to say, it's going to be okay. Tequila from Kathy Schultz, don't you ever forget about me. And the two of us were actually, that's the KS for both of us, Kathy Schultz and Keela Sells. Uh, we actually thought about changing our last names to Storm, and that was going to be Keela and Kylie Storm, the Storm sisters. I think that's kind of cool. I still love Kathy, no matter how many years intervened. Um, I truly, truly love my friends. I need to find the, the poem that Amy wrote for me, too. Um, Amy Gaunt's Taylor. This one um, is by my friend Daniel Keith Duncan, July 7th, 1982. And um, I lost Danny. I lost contact with Danny, and I've, I've looked. I don't know if Danny's still out there somewhere, and or if he finally became Rachel, which was his heart's desire at the time. And he titled this Keela. I met a young woman with exquisite beauty, with taste of fine gold spun into wine, a heart full of charity, of hope and prosperity, and millions of rainbows, oh so divine. A face like an angel, a sigh like a whisper, a certainty like that of a powerful spell. I know what she's thinking when life becomes barren, our friendship enables my soul to propel. I think of her always through storms and fair weather, through crystals of sunshine and raindrops of glass. I audit to her and she listens as she listens to me, and understanding each other is what makes it last. Keela is feminine like a wild twisted rose, blooming through kindness, even through snows. Long tendrils turn around the stalks of misfortune, but soon enough fate will blow her fro. By Daniel K. Duncan, July 7th, 1982. Danny was very sweet to me. And this is his handwriting. This paper has held up really well over the years, and I'm thankful for that. And here I have one from another person who uh, gifted it to me, uh, February 20th, 1992. Um, this was by a gentleman named Steve Marson, um, who was originally from Idaho, and I met when he was in a, a bad situation. I was working in the facility uh, where he was temporarily housed. It's called Pain-Filled Time. I sit in my room with nothing to do, so I let my thoughts drift longingly of you. I don't even know you, but we're two of the same, souls searching for compassion and tired of the game. But you are in your world while I am in mine, each of us trapped by pain-filled time. Fleeting moments together brighten my day, and I'm glad I met you in such a strange way. When I leave here, you will not be forgotten, because you've given me pleasure out of something so rotten. One day I'll return to see your gay smile and to say thank you. Will you wait a short while? I thought that was very sweet. And there's the, again, this paper is held up incredibly well. And a little bit of holes, a couple of holes through it there. And uh, I think I have another poem here. This is one of his poems that he um, actually had typed up and given me a copy of. And it was dated uh, January 29th, 1992, called Day by Day. And uh, you might recognize the 12-step theme in here. Day by day, I thought I'd found a partner to walk with me through life. I loved her from the very start and asked her to be my wife. We had a couple of children, moved to a different state. Life was really getting better. I thought things were great. I didn't know that I was sick with a disease I couldn't see. Everyone around me knew it, everyone but me. I did things without thinking and inflicted a lot of pain. Now the people who once loved me never want to see me again. Prison didn't cure me, no human power could. I thought I was in control and damn, did it feel good. Then one day I awoke to find that my world was gone. Everyone I loved had left me and I was truly alone. That's when it all hit me. 
what every, what everyone said was true. I was an alcoholic and there was nothing I could do. But when I got down on my knees and searched for something to say, my higher power spoke to me. He said, take it day by day. Like I said, a lot of my treasures are paper. Um, I've kept them over the years um, in boxes and bags and notebooks. Um, some I actually typed up of my own. And before I go, I'll, I'll share that too. I've shared this before. Um, but from October 25th, 1984, this is how I felt when I was young. And occasionally I still feel that way, but then you got to remember the cage is in our minds. I'm trapped, trapped like an animal in a cage by the system, circumstance, and age. Trapped like a beast in the slaughterhouse, looking for the door, but there's no way out. Caught in a trap, not made of steel, confused by illusion. What is real? Should I die not knowing and living a lie? Shall I simply give up and close my eyes? No questions, no answers, no righteous rage? Or will I fight for freedom, deny the cage? Will I turn on the butchers of the slaughterhouse? What then will they do if there's no way? What then will I do if there's no way out? Will I cry? Will I curse? Will I be held in thrall? Will I bow? Will I pray? Will I storm the walls? Or will I just call it, call time and at last give in? Do I have the courage to lose, to win? I think perhaps I'd read something about the fear of success at that point, and I was like, hmm, I wonder if that's really true. Um, and here's one from December 7th, 1995. And it's a little dark, too. I am at the end of my rope and hanging. It is a noose around my neck, and every hour it tightens, every day as I hold in check all my deeply pent up frustrations, all my worries and my woes. But they are slipping their bonds, escaping, and I can only watch them go. I cannot change the course of action. It is not in my power, and I am sinking every deep, deeper, even deeper, with each bitter passing hour. And my heart, though it is beating, is as frozen as a stone, devoid of rhyme or reason, and unbearably alone. And you warmed it for a moment with your sweet proximity, but my soul can feel you slipping even farther away from me. And the reason I can't fathom, though stark logic flies in my face and laughs at my naivete and reminds me of my place. Only a fool accepts crumbs from the table and the label second best. And the price of pride the fool must pay is higher than I had guessed. That was a rough time in my life, December 7th, 1995. That's a few of the little things that I have. Oh, and here's another, another treasure. I think this one, I didn't write the date down on it. I really wish I had because I know this was the, the mid-80s. Um, and it's an interesting little poem that was given to me by, I think, a fellow named Chuck in there. It says, what would you do if I went off chasing the setting sun like it was the only one to warm me and light me? Would you wonder, is it I? Would you cry when the binding ties got too tight and were loosened by me, off too far to see and wondering distantly? What would you do? If the supreme being of man told me to go and do thy work, to venture off and live like a lark, what would you do? <laughs> Interesting. Anyway, that's just a few little poems um, for the day. I've been feeling kind of lazy today, kind of trying to rest and uh, recuperate because I have to go back to work on Monday. I don't have the luxury of being able to stay off as long as I'd like when I don't feel well. So I just have to basically make the best of the situation. And uh, since I have an office job, um, I can still work. And um, 
you know, take it a day at a time. So anyway, hope everyone's having a nice weekend, and I um, hope you'll be kind to one another. Think about it. Peace. Talk to you later.